and welcome to another Pike and Shot battle. This time I have the Anglo Dutch government forces against the Jacobite Irish. Um, the enemy force contains quite a few actual trained and equipped soldiers, but also some not so trained and equipped rebels. So we'll need to try to balance uh, quality and also matching Awesome Forest quantity that he can bring. I do want Musketeers with Bayonet. Uh, Bayonet is qu not quite as effective versus Cavalry as Pikes are at this period because they are the uh, Plug Bayonet, but they're good enough and, you know, full musket ability is just too useful to pass up. Um, so late pike and shot are 80% musket, 20% pike. So more firepower. Uh, the 20% pike doesn't mean they're any less effective against cavalry. Basically, uh, combined with the fact that the musketeers often have plug bayonets, uh, it's good enough to see off cavalry in this time period. We do have some um, non-English or Dutch troops available as well in the form of French pike and shot, which are impact foot, or Swedish salvo foot. So I'll consider that. I do want some raw late pike and shot to fill out our line because they are cheap. I'm going to avoid the 75 point veterans or the 72 point veteran musketeers, I think. They just cost too much. I might, in fact, just not bother these impact types in general and just get late. Well, grab the French. Do I want the Swedes? No. The Salvo Foot loses a lot of its firepower at close range, and I might be doing a lot of close range shooting. Um, for lights, we just have one unit of Dragoons. I think that's fine. For cavalry, we have four horse for unarmored horse. I could get veteran horse or veteran unarmored horse. I might want a unit of veterans. I'll grab a couple units of late piking shot with light guns. So it's a pretty shooty infantry heavy force, but we do have nine units of cavalry and one lights. All right, deployment. Awesome Four says he's trying something different this time. I wonder what that could mean. Well, we won't worry too hard about it. This artillery will unlimber here, so you can shoot either this way or cover this flat ground where cavalry would approach. Not a deployment, just a way to organize my thoughts here. Okay. It's just a stream. It counts as non-open terrain and costs more movement points to cross, but it won't disorder. I want my... Musketeers in the center. Did I bring? Yes, yeah, later French pike and shot. We'll have them near the musketeers actually, so the musketeers can make up for their lack of firepower. Uh, due to their impact capability, they have somewhat hindered close range firepower. Raw pike and shot to the flanks. One unit in reserve here. <sighs> Dragoons. We'll keep them here for scouting purposes and then we'll range our cavalry more or less evenly. Although I think I will put my armored horse on the left where I think overall there's a greater likelihood of facing enemy cavalry. And our veterans will go whichever direction the greater threat appears. Next turn, I send him scared. He says, no need, I'm using lots of raw pike and shot, which I've always despised. 
and they are pretty despicable, but like you said, there's lots of them, so good work. Looking at this terrain, I wonder if I shouldn't have just put all eight units of cavalry or nine units on this wing and just gone for a push. we'll be able to bring more muskets to bear as individual units, although I believe he does have more men by quite a bit, 2,000 men, so I think he outnumbers me by about 4 infantry units essentially. So the danger is going to be getting outflanked. I think we have an excess of three infantry units here, so I think what we can do is uh, push left a little bit. Kind of blocks in our own side lines, I know. Keep these dragoons on this flank. I think this extra unit of raw late pike and shot will shift left as well. He does have one unit of veteran horse over there. So we'll send our own veterans in that direction as well. I think we'll try to have the cavalry just push forward. My other thought was that they could turn around and join their comrades on the left, but I think instead we'll see if they can't force any kind of aggressive action through a forest, I know, but it's worth a shot. Onward. We'll need to be careful of these veterans here on the flank. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have tried to pull those away. Right, we'll turn these guys around. All of our horse here are unarmored, so we're gonna have to try to pile on.
So I think we're gonna try to hold here and hold or probably push ineffectually on the flank. We're gonna have to try to win via firefight in the center using our musketeers with bayonet. Next turn. Bunch of armored horse facing up against my unarmored horse, so we'll probably lose this right wing cavalry action. This is unfortunate. Our French pack and shot are needed to charge. See if the guns can't intervene. Not quite. I was hoping for a little more disruption than that though. have one unit at least take cover in this rough and threaten a flank attack if they get too far in. It's five to five, our horse is armored, and we have a unit of veterans, so next turn we can push up with our horse. Okay, next turn. That's a little better. Whoever loses a firefight will have to charge.
Caleb can still hit his cavalry, although they're mostly out of line of fire. Ah, zero, too bad. enough. All right, now we've got to figure out this flank. Horse versus an armored horse. Good. Even fight. The dice are with us. What about, ooh, let's not do that. So impact is even because impact doesn't take armor into account, but armor does work against pistols, so that would be a minus 50 POA. Clip the end off this line by charging my raw pike and shot. But that's okay. Hmm. Hold firm. They'll have to move, or else we can charge. Come on. Nope. Better. Better. Good. Hopefully he'll be feeling the pressure to charge then. Yeah, he's starting to disrupt, which weakens his firepower, so he'll need to charge, I think. Let's go for a quick break, actually. And wheel here, so if he tries to move past, we'll just catch him in the flank. Next turn. Good. So that's slightly in our benefit there, and that was quite nice. Especially because these unarmored horse cannot stand up to these armored horse in a melee, so winning the impact was our only hope. That could get bad. Well, none of our units break yet.
Right. Well, let's go for that. Which unit do I want to set up to flank? I think if I set up to flank this unit, I could potentially roll both of these units. But having cavalry break through and be behind me is quite dangerous as well. I think when it comes down to it, I would like to attempt to save this unit. There. I was hoping that would spread some panic, but it did not. Come on now. There we go. Good. Now we're in charge range. Well, only in close firing range of one unit. This is tempting, actually. Decent win percent would get us out of the line of fire of all these units. I think it's worth it. Okay. Next turn. That's rather awkward. Holding here is very fortunate.
Yeah, if this unit breaks, it could break these two units right off the bat. So, uh, they held firm undisrupted, unfortunately. Impressive cohesion. Let's charge this disrupted unit. Held firm. Okay. Then lock them in. charge. Too bad. Uh, it's our priority charge target. Unfortunate. The cavalry is going to just have to tank some fire in order to set up these charges. Our dragoons can perhaps not distract them, unfortunately. Okay. Still an even fight. I mean, I'm up seven, but there's so many more his unit set that's not significant next turn we're up 11 but I think he's about to get some breaks in this turn especially given this frag That's pretty grim. His fallback there actually saved him from getting flanked. Very nice. Okay, what the hell is going on here? Try to save that unit, I suppose. Not like that.
Really wanted to auto break that unit this turn. Huh. So Pompey asked me just this question on the forums not too long ago. What happens? Well, if these two units happen to somehow be facing one another on an impact phase, I think I'd be locked in. But even though he's one tile to the front and within 45 degrees, because it's across an ongoing melee, I can, in fact, charge this way. The question is, do I want to with flankers on their way? Let's see where this takes us. Willing to risk a number of casualties to get that auto break. We're not close enough because the damn stream. Next turn, then, hopefully. Lock in this cavalry. This is a weird situation, but he can't charge us because we're zone of control locking him with this horse. You'll have to turn to face. means we can feel free to charge. What a mess. Not sure how I feel yet. Next turn. Ouch. Oh no, <laughs> that's pretty bad. Oh, double auto break. That's bad. <laughs> this is so confusing. evened out and we were up five at the start, so it's turning his way. Oh, if only we could... That might work out for us. This does not, though. Might just get rolled up all the way. Ooh, grim. Okay, what the hell is happening? This is so confusing. 
Um, this might actually be worth it, but I think a little bit of patience will be better rewarded. Right then, you, that's tempting as well. Let's do it. Oh, they're still there. I was really hoping to break some of these units. Have to do it. Yeah, I think he's going to win this one. Next turn. Down seven. Ooh, that's critical. Yeah. Hopefully they come back soon. Everyone's disrupted. This can't last. But apparently we even it out somehow. Wonder what happens. Oh, that happens. For starters, that is very nice. Oh, that's exactly what we wanted to see. Patience really paid off there. Okay. That gives us a little bit of room, a little, not a lot, a little bit of room to not die.
They're doomed. I don't think I can do anything to rescue them. I could try to turn fire into them, but I don't think I can disrupt them. And then these guys will show up, so I might just need to write this unit off. See how bad this is. Bad. Right. Okay. Uh, maybe that turned the tide, but maybe our flanks will cave in anyway. Next turn. One to thirty four. It's looking very good. He's setting up for a rear charge here, so I have the choice of either firing and possibly fragging this unit or co covering the rear. I think I will cover. Except a little bit more fire. Very good. That's what raw units do for you. If we rally up, we can charge. And this unit will just get shot out of the saddle. Very good. Next turn.
Raw troops, here we go. Sixty one. So, not a clean win, but a win nevertheless. All right, there we have it. So, um, this hill, of course, was a substantial advantage to me, although Awesome Poor did a great job of forcing me to fight on flat ground or pushing up to the same elevation as me. It was still difficult for him to fight uphill in large portions. Um, and the only reason that he was able to do so well, despite the terrain obstacle, was the sheer numbers that this jacket list can provide. But I think a better choice, although it wouldn't have guaranteed victory, uh, would have been for him to deploy defensively on his own hill here. And then kind of defend the open ground. So with that, we would have engaged in a firefight across the stream, and I probably would have push my masked musketeers into this forest, which would have been tough for him. But otherwise, the battle would have been on open ground, and maybe he would have been able to bring his numbers to bear a little bit more effectively without the constraints of, you know, moving across a stream and uphill, or having my men have space to retreat uphill. But, uh, I mean, 37%, that's pretty close, and it certainly could have gone the other way. So, a good game to awesome four, and I'll set up another pair for us.